This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about a really cool new tool called the Impervious Browser. And as part of this, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin Layer 3. So Bitcoin has made some very wise scaling decisions over the past decade. There's been this focus on building a really strong foundation before moving on to higher layers. And the goal throughout all of this has been keeping the base layer, the base blockchain, decentralized and not subject to the control of a small group of actors. One way to do this, of course, is to minimize blockchain bloat so that every Bitcoiner can run their own node without running into processing or storage problems. Now, Ethereum lost this race many years ago when it made the decision to try to do so much at the base layer. And this is really a big mistake to have smart contracts as extensive as Ethereum does at the base layer because it causes blockchain bloat and it makes it such that almost no Ethereans run their own nodes. It's all It all gets outsourced to companies like Infura, which are themselves controlled by Ethereum insiders like Joe Lubin at Consensus. And then when Infura goes out, Ethereum has lots of problems. Then the other problem, of course, was Ethereum moved on to proof of stake and thus basically guaranteed that the coin would become more and more centralized. And today we have large regulated companies imposing U.S. government mandated censorship, OFAC censorship, at the protocol level for Ethereum. As we can see here, over the last seven days, 69% of the blocks were, had enforced OFAC compliance. So this is really a captured, controlled coin. Unlike Ethereum, Bitcoin scales in layers. You have the base layer, the blockchain, layer one. You have layer two, different layer twos. You have liquid, which we uh, still need to talk about. We have the lightning network, which is the most exciting layer two to Bitcoin. And then on top of, and on layer three, you have apps that are built on top of these various layer twos like the Lightning Network. And I think this is exactly the correct engineering approach to take and to have taken. It's very similar to the approach that the internet itself took, scaling in layers. And we can see here how the internet scales in layers. You have the link layer, the network layer, the transport level, TCP, application layer, HTTP, DNS, and these other protocols. So what I'm going to talk about today is something that is built is a layer three solution to Bitcoin. It's called the impervious browser and I'm using it today. As you can see, this is the world's first lightning Bitcoin lightning native web browser. It's free and open source. You can download it for free. You can expect the you can inspect the code for yourself if you know how to do that. And the nice thing about this browser is of course, there's no data collection by impervious as you would get with the more traditional browsers. The other thing that people don't realize about Impervious and, it, and its browser, it's really a suite of apps that's been bundled up as a browser. So they started releasing these apps uh, back in 20, uh, 2021, 2022. And it's, uh, I like their marketing here. They call the Impervious browser Zoom without Zoom, Google Docs without Google, Medium without Medium, WhatsApp without WhatsApp, Identity without the state. Etc. So basically, starting in August of 2021, Impervious released a bundle of APIs built on the Bitcoin Lightning Network, which created a programmatic layer for Bitcoin. And this is how you really want to do it. You want to do stuff at higher layers so you don't have problems at the base layer. And you keep the base layer with as small of an attack surface as, pro as possible and with as little blockchain bloat as possible. So what this is, is obviously it's a browser, privacy focused web browser, open source privacy first, that doesn't track, collect, or share user behavior or data, including no collection of user telemetry data. That's the browsing piece of the browser. But there's also some other apps that are built in. There's secure messaging, real-time end-to-end encrypted messaging and file sharing between peers via a protocol they call Didcom. You have group video calls, so it's very similar to Zoom in that to that extent, except you're not sharing all of your personal information and personal data with a Chinese company. You have live docs, which are obviously like Google Docs, where you can collaborate in real time, P2P. And then you have something that I haven't really explored, but decentralized identifiers or DIDs. DIDs allow users to cryptographically control their identity and designate how they'd like to exchange data. So this is one way of sort of uh, having a Facebook account, for example, but you control the data. That's something we'll investigate in a later video. Most exciting part about this, this browser though, is as I said, it's Bitcoin Lightning native. 
and this is something that I still need to play around with. Maybe I'll do it over, over Christmas break. Connect a Lightning node to enable streaming payments between peers and to optionally route messaging data over the Bitcoin Lightning network. The Impervious Browser, Browser's Decentralized Messaging Communications DITCOM system utilizes both peer relays and the Bitcoin Lightning Network to establish real-time crypt cryptographically secure data transmission channels. And so when we talk about Bitcoin being the native currency of the internet, we're really beginning to see that form in the form of the Impervious Browser and all these other Layer 2 and Layer 3 apps that make sending money over the internet part of your browser part of the basic internet browsing experience and messaging experience. So in, for example, you could stream Bitcoin Lightning payments during video calls while using end-to-end -end encrypted messaging or from the dashboard. So this would be interesting to explore. This might be a different way of doing, for example, live YouTube videos. And it's unclear exactly how this would work with a large group of people, but I think uh, we're still so very early in this. And this is, this is an amazing tool when you uh, download the Impervious Browser and you start to browse the newsletter and all the functionality. I think you'll, you'll be impressed. So that's something to do over the holidays. I'm actually going to be doing some traveling until December 31st. And so unfortunately, no videos until then. And I would encourage all of you to unplug from the news and the drama as much as you can this holiday season. Looks like it's going to be a long holiday with Binance possibly teetering on the brink. You can just watch the BNB token if you want to know what's going to happen to Binance. But I think it's important to unplug, especially, especially if you don't own BNB, if you don't own crypto and you only own Bitcoin. This is a good time to spend some time with your friends and loved ones, spend some time out in nature outside. And the good news about having your Bitcoin in cold storage is you don't have to worry about Binance. You don't have to worry about Coinbase. You don't have to worry about who the next scam bankster fraud is. You don't have to worry about whether Vitalik will, will ever enable Ethereum stake, uh, stake to Ethereum withdrawals. And you don't have to worry about the latest DeFi hack. You sleep like a baby. So I'd encourage all of you, if you haven't done it yet, this holiday season is a good time. Get your Bitcoin off the exchanges, put them on a hardware wallet like the Trezor or cold card and also don't keep don't keep checking bitcoin's price not only is it uh, bad for your uh, bad for your psychology bad for your dopamine system but it also lets your browser know unless you're using the impervious browser lets everyone know who's tracking you online that you're very very interested in bitcoin because you keep checking the price every every 10 minutes so you are leaking privacy there and if your plan is to hold it for the next decade or the next hundred years you really there's really no reason to check the price because it doesn't give you any forward information as to where it's going to be in 10 years from now so i'd encourage all of you to unplug for a couple days maybe a week maybe a little more than a week as i'll be doing now if you really can't help yourself and you really need your bitcoin daily video fix, I'd encourage you to check out my back catalog, all my free YouTube videos. Obviously we have the videos tab here, which I'll link to below, but then there's also a playlist tab where I've tried to organize these uh, videos according to topics. So we have a, a whole playlist about the problem with proof of stake, whole playlist Bitcoin mining being good for the environment, a whole playlist about the Ethereum train wreck, the, the petrodollar system, etc. So I think they're probably close to a thousand videos now that you can take a look at. And this would be a good time to sort of play catch up if you've been trying to watch all of my videos. I'd also encourage you after you exhaust the free videos and you really want to go down deeper down the rabbit hole, you want to spend the holidays uh, really leveling up in Bitcoin, then you can check out my paid course on Bitcoin, which I'll link to in the description notes below. I'll have a discount code there as well, which I encourage you to use. And when you sign up for these, this uh, Bitcoin course, this paid Bitcoin course, you get all my other courses in addition. You get all my trading courses, Momentum Stock Secrets. I have a real estate course. I have an IPO course. Learn to trade with options, learn to trade with futures, learn to do financial statement analysis. I'm really focused on Bitcoin now, but I do have all of these courses, which are still quite relevant and I think still quite useful. So I'd encourage you to check those out. First, check out all the paid, uh, all the free, the free videos on YouTube. And then when you want to really go a little bit deeper and uh, especially work on some of the pr more practical things in Bitcoin, I have um, in this, in this paid course, I talk about how to buy Bitcoin anonymously, how to run your own Bitcoin node and, and connect your hardware wallet to it how to do coin join, which I obviously can't talk about for obvious reasons here, and also how to set up a multi-sig, multi-vendor uh, vault, which is really the, the gold standard or the Bitcoin standard for storing 
your Bitcoin. So be sure to check that out. You can check out the trading courses and the real estate course as well. So I just wanted to wish all of you a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. I want to encourage everyone, stay humble, stack sats. We're going to make it through just fine. Bitcoin is going to win this race. I have no doubt about that. So I look forward to taking some time off and I look forward to seeing all of you again soon on December 31st. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you all.